This lesson is for section 14.3. This is an intro to sequences and series. Um, our objectives for the day are to find some of the terms of a sequence that's defined either generally or recursively, which we'll talk about in just a second, and then to also use sigma notation to rewrite the sum of a sequence. So let's begin here with just defining what a sequence is. Now, a numerical sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. So here I have two examples, 1, 6, 10, example 2 here has different notation because we have that dot dot dot. Now, this would be a finite sequence, this first example, because it only has a finite number of terms. Example two, though, is an infinite sequence because it's you can read this as and so on. So we would know that it continues in that pattern. Now, the term is just an individual entry in, in whatever the sequence is. So for example, this is term one, term two, term three. Now, a sequence uh, is a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers. But instead of using function notation, though, we use a sub n notation. Okay, the domain of an infinite sequence is the set of all positive integers, while the domain of a finite sequence is just the set of the first n positive integers. Now, there are two common ways to define a sequence by specifying the general term. So, the first is to use a form that only depends on the number of the term, n. So to find the first five terms when you know the, the general term, you would simply substitute values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 into the general form for n, and then simplify. So I'm saying this really quickly, but basically, all you need to do to find the first three terms of this sequence here is to substitute in n equal to 1, n equal to 2, and n equal to 3. It's just a function, basically, where we have our input. n equals 1 would be our input, and our output so let's, for example, have a sub 1. This is kind of like showing f of 1. Again, we don't use function notation, though. So a sub 1 would be 1 over 1 plus 1, 1 half. a sub 2, our second term, would be 2 over 2 plus 1, or 2 thirds. And again, that would be like seeing f of 2 is equal to 2 thirds. But again, we don't use that function notation. And then our third term, would be when n equals 3, so a sub 3 is equal to 3 over 3 plus 1. So I hope this is not confusing to you at all. It's just really showing you um, function notation replaced with a sub n. Now, sometimes a sequence is defined recursively, though. So a, a recursive definition just means that you have to know um, either the current or the previous term to define the next term. So, for example, a sub uh, n plus 1. This would be the next term if a of n, or a sub n is your current term, and then a sub n minus 1 would be your previous term. Now, you can recognize uh, a recursive defined uh, sequence because you're going to see inside uh, the definition here, I use a sub n. So I'd have to know what a sub n is in order to calculate a sub n plus 1. So for example here, I'm going to do again the same question here. We're going to define or find the first three terms. If a sub 1 is 5, then a sub n plus 1. When n equals 1, then this would mean a sub 2. So the second term here, we're finding the second term, would be 2 times the first term, a sub 1 minus 1. So we take 2 times 5 minus 1 to get 9. And our third term, a sub 3, would be 2 times the previous term, which is a sub 2 minus 1. So recursive meaning you have to know the previous term in order to uh, find the next one. So this would be 2 times 9 minus 1, which is just 17. So there's our first, second, and third terms. Now, if you were to read this statement out loud, you can think of this as the next term so the next term here is twice the current term minus 1, or 1 less than twice the current term. That's how you would actually read that out to yourself. And here we can see that that holds true after we calculate these values. Because, um, for example, if we look at 5, uh, the first term here, and then 9, our next term, 9, is twice this amount, but minus 1. So it's less than, well, 1 less than twice the amount. So in your homework, you're also going to be asked to graph a sequence. Now remember, a sequence is just like a function. So here, 
we're asking you to graph a sequence that's defined by x sub n is equal to 1 over 2 to the n for n is greater than or equal to 0. Now don't think of this um, x as your x coordinate. It's, it's not like function notation here. This is like a sub n. So it's just meaning the term. So here if it's defined for n is greater than or equal to 0, then we start at n equals 0. And our input is n equals 0. So x sub 0 is equal to 1 over 2 to the 0, or 1 over 1 x sub 1 would equal 1 over 2 to the first, 1 half. x sub 2 would be 1 over 2 squared, 1 fourth. And finally, x sub 3 would be 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 eighth. So let's think about what this actually means in terms of notation here. If n is your input, then x sub n is your output. So instead of graphing in a standard x, y plane here, I'm going to graph with my axes as n and x sub n. So when I graph here, I just have coordinates. For example, here I have the coordinate 0, 1. Here's my input, n equals 0 is my input, and 1, x sub 0, is my output. So 0, 1, let's graph that here. Then I have another coordinate at 1, 1 half from here. So I have 1, 1 half, let's put that about here. So let's label this. And then uh, 2, 1 fourth, and finally 3 1 eighth. It's kind of terrible, but sorry. So there's a sketch here um, for how you would graph that sequence. So just think of your t in terms of input and output, and I think it should be very straightforward then. All right, last step we have sigma notation. Okay, sometimes we might ask you to find the sum of some of the terms of a sequence. So to indicate the sum of the terms of a sequence, you use the capital Greek letter sigma, which looks like this. Um, and so the notation is sometimes called sigma notation instead of summation notation, but what you're really doing is finding the sum. So here it looks really complex. Um, so the sigma here just means you're summing. Anytime you see the sigma, that just means to add terms. So we have our term a sub k would just be defined as a sub 1 plus a sub, oh, there's a 2 missing there, plus a sub 3 plus dot 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 all the way up to your nth term a sub n. Okay, notice um, I just made the same mistake over here. That should be a 2 there. Sorry about that. Um, that you can use different notation here. Okay, these aren't really variables. It's just defining um, the term. So k or j is called the index of summation. Okay, k equals 1 is the lower limit of your summation and k equal to n, but we don't use k again, so we just write n up top, is the upper limit of summation. So what it means is that you're going to evaluate between these two numbers here. So 1 up to n. So term 1 all the way up to term n. So term 1 all the way up to term n. So this is your low point, this is your high point basically. Okay, And you just add your results together. So let's, let's try that. Actually here, here's a basic example here. Um, so our low index here is 1, so our first term here would be just 1 squared. Then we go all the way up to 4, the fourth term, so 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. So this is what uh, your function is defined to be, so 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared is all you're really calculating here, so it's not so much that the math is hard, it's just really understanding uh, the notation. So what is this? 10 plus another 20, so 30. Okay, now let's try ones that are a little bit more complicated. Okay, now this um, notation here is saying I'm going to take the first term all the way up to the third term, so I evaluate this expression here. So 3 times, oops, I made another typo. This should be a k here. Sorry. Since this is a k here, this should match that variable there. Um, or we can think of this as a j. doesn't matter, I guess. So this is 3 times uh, 1 minus 2 squared plus the next term, 3 times 2 minus 2 squared. Then your third and final term, because this is your upper limit, so 3 times 3 minus 2 squared. And then we just simply evaluate from here. So we have um, 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 9 minus 2, 7 squared. 
So we have 1 plus 16 plus 49, which gives me 66. All right, now in number 5 here, um, I just want to do this one, one last practice problem with you. This I does not mean imaginary, so when you see an I, don't assume that it means the imaginary number I. It's just another notation. This is the same as putting like a K here or a J, um, so don't think of this as the imaginary number. Um, so let's evaluate here from 1 to 4. So we have our I term outside of here, so that's going to be 1 times x to the 1 minus 1 plus then 2, because I is equal to 2 next. So 2 times x to the 2 minus 1, and then 3 times x to the 3 minus 1, and finally our last term, 4 times x to the 4 minus 1. So here we get x to the 0, or simply 1, plus 2 to x, uh, 2 times x to the first power, plus 3 times x to the second power, and then 4 times x to the third power. Okay, so we actually have to leave this written like this because these are obviously not like terms, so this is the sum here uh, for number 5. Okay, the last thing we're going to be asking you to do is to be able to rewrite a sum using sigma notation instead. So really what we're doing is, um, here we gave you sigma notation, we asked you to find what that sum would be, and now we're working backwards. So I want to know what that original sigma notation might have looked like. So Let's start here. Um, you're going to have to look for a pattern, but let's start with the sigma symbol. Okay, So I'm finding the sum of, it looks like, the first term, n equals 1, all the way up to n equals 12. So I don't care what you guys use for your index of summation. You can use k, i, j, whatever. I'm just going to use k, so it really doesn't matter what we choose here. Um, but it starts, our low limit starts at k equals 1. Okay, And it looks like our, our uh, upper limit here is 12. So I have that part of the uh, the sigma notation written. So now let's work on the general term. It looks like here we take x and we raise it to whatever that term number is, right? x to the first power here, it's 2 and 2 factorial underneath. So I'm taking x to the k power over k factorial. So this would be how I would rewrite number six using sigma notation. Okay, next up, number seven here actually looks pretty similar to the one that we were just working on. Um, a major difference though is that I'm actually given um, what a general term is when n equals n. So uh, this is really kind of helpful for me because now when I write out that general term here, I can just use this, okay? But I don't want to use the notation with um, n. So I'm going to figure out what I want to use as my sigma, or I mean my um, index of summation, which let's call it j this time, okay, just because I feel like it. Um, so here I'm going to start at j equal to 1, because this looks like it's, you know, n equals 2 here, but it's really not. n equals actually 1 there. So my index of summation here, j equals 1, would be my lower limit. j equals 1 is my lower limit, and it looks like we're taking the sum all the way to the nth term, okay? Then, here, since it's already given to me, I can just substitute in using this notation, though. So I want to use that index of summation here, so x to the j over j plus 1 factorial. So that one's a nice one, because it's already kind of done for you. All right, that's the end of the lesson for today. Um, make sure you ask good questions and get to work. Nice job.